In this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast, James Barlow and I, we are going to share our thoughts on the top NBA prospects on the NC State Wolfpack. NC State just made an incredible run to the Final Four. They were the 11th seed. They beat conference rival Duke 76-64 to go to their first Final Four since 1983. James was even born in 1983. But in this episode, we're going to talk about the NBA prospects on their team. Do they even have a legitimate NBA prospect? But you know, this episode is mostly going to be about the man of the hour, DJ Burns. Stay tuned to hear our thoughts on Burns, his NBA prospects, if he's an NBA player, and what to expect in his matchup with Zach Eady coming up. Stay tuned. Shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Rafael Barlow, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board and the founder of NBA Draft Junkies. And my co-host for today is none other than my brother, James, who is, uh, you know, I guess unofficially, but the VP of NBA Big Board. I want you to follow us, pay attention to us, because we got some good stuff cooking up this summer it's going to be the summer separation for nba big board if you're not subscribed please subscribe like share comment make sure you click the bell so you can be notified every time we post because we are your source for nba draft content five days a week if you don't do five days a week we're going to get you at least 19 to 20 episodes a month and it is draft season there's only four teams left in college basketball so we are we like I said, draft season is about to heat up. Let's talk about NC State. The coach was on the hot seat to get fired. I remember like two years ago, he was a coach that a lot of people were talking about. What's his name? Kelvin Keats. Yeah. With the man with the Prada, the Prada America Cup. So Yo, hold on real quick, seat. real quick. Grant Hill, man. How are you going to call the Prada Cups referee shoes, man? Like, come on, Grant. You live in Atlanta? And he right? played in Detroit. You played in Detroit, and he you was playing during the era of the peak product cup. No, he, like, was, he was NBA he was, shoe. He was he was out. He was out. Oh, he played in, he played up until like two thousand. He, he was guarding Kobe. I mean, Grant Hill been around the block for a minute. Yeah, but he was he was that was they was they was wearing jerseys back then when he when he got yeah. Out. But when they switch, he was he was playing during the dress code era. Is what I'm saying. And you know, all the dudes, especially Rip, like they put them baggy jeans. I mean, but you couldn't see their <laughs> products. The see big the wide leg jeans over the products. Either way, Grant Hill, come on, man. I bet you half our listeners don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the French one should. <laughs> yeah. But he was on the hot seat. I remember a couple years ago because I was a big Darion Sebron fan. Anyone that knows me, I was a big Traquavion Smith fan. The knock on him was he didn't know how to coach. And, and I mean, he didn't play with any structure. So I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for NC State as the underdog, but I'm definitely happy to see him take his team to the final four. Hopefully he gets a, a contract extension. He got one. Two years just for making the, uh, winning the ACC oh, tournament. Oh, that's right. That is right. Yeah. That is right. That, he he that. made like 800 racks. <laughs> More pride is for him because those hey. shoes, shoes 800 bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but DJ Burns, man, what a crazy – tournament run for him i actually liked him last year i didn't think he was an nba player he was just fun to watch especially for me because i love like old school post games if you're an everyday you know how much i love seeing guys on the block and go to work and dj burns today i'm just gonna say it nicely he gave kyle filipowski business filipowski could not check him too light. It was a lot of buckets on his head. He finished with 29. I'm talking Burns, that is. Finished yes. with 29 points, four rebounds, three assists. He was 13 of 19 from the floor. Was named the MOP of the South Region. Like I said, led 11 seeded NC State to the Final Four. Their first appearance since 1983. Setting up a matchup with Zach Eady. We'll talk about Zach Eady and Purdue in an episode coming up next. But let's just get right into it, man. What were your thoughts on DJ Burns? All right. So, look, man, DJ Burns, man, I wish he was about three years younger, two inches taller. But you know what, though? It it doesn't matter because I honestly feel yeah, I, everything that I read about him, he's a very smart dude. 
He's talking about he got vending machines, he got businesses. I'm sure he's got a master's degree as long as he's been in school. I mean, I'm hiring him. I don't think he's an NBA player, but I'm hiring him as my post coach, man. If I'm <laughs> Detroit Pistons, like, come on, man. Did you see the bang, spin, floater he had in the second half? He yeah. hit the hard bump and then the, the quick spin, like his post, you're not going to be able to teach his touch around the basket. Like, that's a gift, right? But he has footwork and moves, and we talk about pace for guards on a perimeter, right? He's got pace on a block, and I'm telling you, man, I don't know what his future holds as far as what he's going to do professionally overseas. He's going to do the G League. But if I got, like, a young, big, like, a Jalen Duran, that's who I want, like, working with him. Again, I know Duran's got his issues on defense, but I'm like, yo, look, hey, man, you got you got you got NAL money, right? We know you a smart dude. That we hear you got businesses, man. I'm putting him, <laughs> I'm putting him in the practice clothes, man, and, and teaching like, yo, he's got talent, man, like for real talent. And it may not translate the highest level, but like if he could take one of these young bigs under his wing, man, I I feel like man, let the man finish playing, man. You try to turn him into a coach, man. Let, man he let the like twenty five, man. man. About yeah, 25. 25 and oh, let the man finish playing, man. You trying look, to turn look. him into a coach, into a, a grad <laughs> assistant already. Man. I'm saying, man, when it, when you get done, man, you, can't, you, you can't teach what DJ Burns has. You can't teach that touch, but you can teach those moves. I 100 agree. Now that the passing, I mean, again, right. that's that's a gift. Hey, did you see what uh the interview Jokic after the game? He was yeah. late. And he was like, man, I was watching DJ Burns, man. Like, that's the ultimate compliment right there. Like, he was like, yo, I was late. I was watching DJ Burns. That dude is amazing. But no, nah, I don't I don't think he's an NBA player, man. I, I think um, the foot speed, the pace of the game would be too much for him. But he's definitely a joy to watch. And he's a professional. But like I said, I, I want to, you know, five years down the line when he's done, I want to see he's not gonna be done at thirty, man. You, you try to get my man out, man. He's not trying to get him out. He's, he's not gonna be done at thirty, man. Oh, man. I mean, whenever he can still he's play. done, whenever he's done, put on that polo, bro. <laughs> Sit behind man. the bench, man. He was Tell just a, a problem, just because one, he's a good passer, and so I think I, I got people texting me, you know, who talking about. He's better than Filipowski. And like, yeah, in a college game. And he's, I mean, he, like I said, it's, it's hard to like not say, you know, if someone says he's better than Filipowski, the way the matchup went down, it's hard to like be like, mm -hmm. you know, Filipowski's better. But at the same time, you know, the NBA game is different from the college game. Yes. And I just hate for a guy like him and even like Kenny Lofty. You're talking about these guys that can't nobody stop one on one. It's just the problem is in the NBA, nobody's going to give them the ball and clear out and let them go one-on-one, -on -one, give them a bunch of post feeds and touches and play at that pace. But they're like in this in-between where they're like, they're better than some NBA players. Like there's NBA players that are not going to be able to stop them. They were just born in the wrong era. But Burns, man, I mean, the size, the touch, you know, at first the the Escalade comparisons, and for those that don't know, Escalade is mm -hmm. Mark Jackson's older brother who played in the A one. He was he might have been like four hundred pounds. The Escalade comparisons. I think at first they started off as a joke, mm -hmm. but then it's like the more you watch, you see like the nimble footwork at that size. I mean, a guy whose body is that wide, you're not going to be able to like get around him on a post feed. And then if he got three dribbles, he's backing you down. But what I like about Burns is even if he doesn't like back you all the way down with three dribbles, he's got a little bit of range on that soft touch finish and floater. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got so much game around the rim and he's got a little bit of not necessarily like, I mean, he can space the floor a little bit, not necessarily like a three point shooter, but as an NBA prospect, it's, it's crazy because he could end up being like Kenny Lofton. Now, he's older than Kenny Lofton, but mm -hmm. you could see a guy that goes to the G league and maybe and we talked about it in the previous episode, a G League coach could be like, hey, man, I'm trying to win games. I know yeah. I'm supposed to be here to develop, but I'm trying to win games. Let me let me yeah. get a ball to Kenny Lofter. Let me get a ball to DJ Burns on the block and let him go to work against this 6'9", 6'10", 215-pound rim runner, vertical lob threat that can't check him. And then he puts right. up big numbers. I mean, Lofton had a game against the Ignite 
Last week we had like 52. But I mean, Lawson had 42 in the NBA game too. Yeah, so. 40 in the NBA game, but he had 52 in the G League game. And yeah. so what's and what's hard for some people to understand how the game is different is, yes, Ethan Almanza is a, a better NBA prospect, but Ethan was running from that matchup. I mean, it was nothing he could do about it. And it's still like, even like for some people, especially old school NBA fans, they're like, why? Why can't he play in the NBA? Because the game is, is totally different. All right. When we return, we're going to talk a little bit more about DJ Burns, but we're going to talk about his matchup with Zach Eady. And then we're going to talk about a few other guys on the NC State roster that could potentially maybe get a two-way Exhibit 10 Summer League invite. Stay tuned. But let's talk about Prize Picks, which is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. And it is the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. You just pick more or less than two or more player stats and you can watch the winnings roll in. And March is officially over, but the biggest moments in college sports tip off this month of April, that is. So you can be part of the action on Prize Picks for both men's and women's college basketball. Plus, the NBA playoffs are right around the corner. You can get in on the playoff action and win a hundred times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during the NBA postseason. And the play-in tournament is, what, April 16th, 17th, 19th. The playoffs at the 20th, April 20th, that is. And check this out. You can now win up to a hundred times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks, you could turn 10 bucks into a thousand. That is an incredible flip. With basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, again, America's number one fantasy app. So go to prizepicks.com, use the promo code locked on NBA. It has to be in lowercase letters, though. Use the promo code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Again, prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. For a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Pick more, pick less. It is that easy at prizepicks.com. All right, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and you have to turn down the volume because all they're doing is shouting and screaming and coming up with fake debates? Well, you can make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, which is a free 24 hours a day, seven days a week streaming channel which is programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, second segment. The first segment, we talked about DJ Burns. James was trying to send my man into the coaching staff early Hey man, <laughs> send him to the coach staff. Man, yeah, he's twenty four, but man, he's not. He's not ready. James talking about put on a polo and put him <laughs> in on the Detroit Pistons coaching staff to teach <laughs> Jalen Durant some post game. I just Whoa, see man. the vision a little early, man. That's all. Man, my man didn't even finish cutting down the nets yet. You already <laughs> giving him a, a, a coaching job. Zach Eady, he plays against Zach Eady. We're going to have an episode covering the top NBA prospects on Purdue or the top NBA prospect <laughs> singular on Purdue. And Burns versus Eady. What is what do you think that matchup is going to look like? Man, I, I have no idea. Look, it's going to. It's going to be fun because it's going to be interesting to see if what is he? Six, nine, six, ten. DJ Burns, what kind of post moves? He has for Zach Eady. How is he going to uh, combat that length that Zach Eady possesses? But what they will do is they will use him in that high post, and he's going to be able to hit cutters. And uh, that's probably how he's going to how they're going to neutralize Zach Eady clogging up uh, space in the paint. Because if he's got to defend to the elbow extended, then you can hit cutters. So, but. It, you know what? I, I already know DJ Burns got some tricks for him. I'm just I'm I'm anxious to see what what he has up his sleeve. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be like an old school clash. I saw a picture on on Twitter. Well, it always be Twitter to me, 
where it was uh, Yao Ming being guarded by Zach Randolph, and he's like, I'm going <laughs> to tell my kids <laughs> this is Zach Heady versus DJ Burns. <laughs> so, yeah, um, no, I'm looking forward to the matchup. But let's talk about some other guys on NC State's roster that, you know, may be a little bit intriguing. I mean, with a, a, a deep, like, tournament run, there's more eyes on you, and it could be somebody that maybe NBA scouts – didn't really know about, but now the world is watching and they get a chance to see them. Name some guys that you think could benefit from this extra exposure. Mohammed, man, let me make sure I get his name right. Diara. Diara, okay. There's so many guys from yeah. France and Senegal that have that exact name. And it's like, like when John I see Smith. the name come up, I have to like figure out which one because there's a French prospect now that's a wing. I think he's like 2006 generation I think has a chance to be an NBA player or at least prospect he has the same name I mean that's just like a very very common name in in France and in West Africa but I I like him he's yeah. had a big NCAA tournament I mean he didn't have like a huge game a huge game today as far as like on paper but in the NCAA tournament man he's really like made a name for himself today was one for six with three points, but against Marquette, he had 11 points, 15 rebounds, 11 yes. points, 13 rebounds, yes. and three blocks against Oakland, against Texas Tech. He had 17 and 12. Yes. I think he's greatly benefited from the extra exposure in the NCAA mm -hmm. tournament run. He had uh, 11 and 14 in the ACC championship. So it's mm -hmm. like he is getting hot at the right time, 6'10", yes. 215. What are your thoughts on Mohamed Diara? I'm going to echo everything that you said, and I like that. Well, good for him that he shoots threes too, right? And that's one way to uh, boost your, your stock, especially this time of the year. You see a 6'10 guy that rebounds that potentially has the opportunity to stretch the floor. Uh, we'll see how helpful that is against, and we'll see who they end up putting him on against Purdue. Because you got to think that you don't want DJ Burns picking up any fouls, trying to, you know, guard Edie. And you're gonna deal with Tim refs too. But then I think Yo, he might be Edie. giving up a hundred pounds. Hundred pounds, yeah, at least seventy five at the minimum. Seventy five yeah. pounds. But you can you can use him as the the weak side shot blocker. To, or at least to, to change shots in the middle of the floor. So, like, you want to make Edie, man, he's going to his left shoulder every single time. But, I mean, you know, he's 7'4", you can't really stop it. And then maybe DR can change a few shots there. But uh, he, he caught my eye with this tournament run. Maybe he has a chance. I know he's a, a regular senior, not a super senior. Um, well, let me tell you, let me ask you, what are your thoughts on DJ Horn? DJ Horn was their leading scorer this season. I think he's already accepted an invite to play in Portsmouth. He's another one of these super seniors. I mean, college basketball is like getting old. I saw a stat that it was like, I forgot the exact stat. I can, I can pull it up. Was it North Carolina that was older than Oklahoma City Thunder? That, that yeah, that that's true. But I mean, like there was last year, Drake was older than the Houston Rockets. But in the Elite Eight, there were 20 out of the starters in the Elite Eight. 24 were seniors, four juniors, 10 sophomores. But it was 18 transfers and 16 fifth-year players. And DJ Horn is well-traveled. My man went to Illinois State for two years, Arizona State for two years, and then NC State. So he's a fifth-year senior, but he's from Raleigh, North Carolina. So I imagine it's it's a pretty amazing experience to be back in the North Carolina triangle and leading NC state to the final four. I mean, that rivalry of all those schools in North Carolina from Carolina to Duke to wake forest mm -hmm. and NC state is the team in the final four. Like who would have thought that like even, I mean, 24 hours ago, it seemed unlikely 48 beat, hours ago. They beat Duke three times in a row, right? Including today. So, And it's hard so. to beat a team three times in a row. I believe so. But, yeah, I mean, DJ Horn is good. Like I said, he was their leading scorer, average a little under 17 points a game, three rebounds, two assists. And he had a, you know, a good game against Duke, 20 points, four rebounds, three assists. Shot seven of 16 from the floor, had 19 points against Marquette. He's been playing well. I think he's someone that 
I mean, at least we'll get an exhibit 10. I think he'll be someone on a summer league roster. He'll definitely have a lot of workouts in the pre-draft process. And I think he's greatly benefited from the additional exposure that that comes with, you know, a final four run. 100% agree. All right. When we return, we're going to wrap this episode up. We're going to go back into some predictions for the final four matchup against Purdue. James is going to share his thoughts on who he thinks is going to win some of the key matchups outside of Burns versus Edie. So stay tuned. All right. Before we get into the last segment, I want to let you know that fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides you with access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. So whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the NCAA tournament, you are going to want to have a fire TV because fire TV recently created the fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us that locked on and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. And Fire TV lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all of the latest in the world of sports, whether it's March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and more. Not to mention they have great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. So check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. And if you haven't checked out the Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, go to Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, last segment. NC State, Purdue, give me your predictions for this matchup, this old school matchup where the two best players are going to be banging in a post. Give me your 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 outcome. I want NC State to win. I don't know if they will win. Um, it's hard to defend Zach Eady, man. It really is. And he's seven four. He's physical. The refs allow him to be overly physical, maybe. I mean, it's it's gonna be tough to beat them. I'm rooting for NC State and my man in the Pradas. I want him to bust out some white and red Pradas for a championship <laughs> game <laughs> next week. But uh, I, I I think Purdue's going to end up beating them. How mad is Adidas that he's wearing Pradas <laughs> and they didn't get that that two-second clip of him wearing, like, some Anthony Edwards or some Adidas kicks? <laughs> hey, man, you got you to gotta outfit him. I don't know. The co- I mean, Dawn Staley wears whoever she wants. She on the bench wearing Louis Vuitton. So I man. guess the coaches – do whatever they want to do. Jerseys, that's true. But I'm sure Adidas would have loved that second because somebody's probably Googling Proud of America's Cup and like, oh, those are nice. Oh, $895. Okay, never mind. Yeah, that's anyway, true. yeah, I, I, um, I'm looking forward to that matchup. It'll be interesting. I know you talked about DR as a weak side shot blocker, but can you block Zach Eady's shot on the weak side? Because by you the time block he gets it, you got to change a few of them. But can you as a weak side shot blocker? Because by the time he turns off that shoulder, he's at the rim. <laughs> like he's he's already there. Like there's not much room uh, well, as a weak side shot blocker. Here's the thing, though. So like if you do put DJ Burn, Burns on him, he has the strength. I mean, the you know, the the stomach, yeah. the strength to take those blows. And, you know, if if he can push Zach out further than he's comfortable and then you have DR going out there, and I, you don't have to block every shot, but you got to show him, yeah. show him some hands. So it, you know, blocking shots is is cool, but you're not gonna block every shot. And then Zach Eady's gonna get 20 attempts, so like he's just gotta, you know, change. And like I said, it's gonna be interesting to see if whose whose will is stronger, like whose playing style is going to prevail in that Eady versus Burns matchup. Because you know what I'm saying, like that's. The uh, seven foot, three hundred pound man trying to back down a six nine, three hundred and twenty pound man. Like you would have told me, I would have saw this in in college basketball. But like, man, yeah, right. So check this out. They got Burns listed at two seventy five. If he's t- <laughs> <laughs> he, he was two seventy five when he was at Tennessee. 
But yeah, they got him. He was definitely slimmer when he was at Tennessee. Yeah. But yeah, they got him listed at 275. I think he's I definitely think he's he's bigger than than 275. Also want to mention Casey Morsel for NC State as a guy that I think has a chance to play in summer league, get some workouts, maybe be an exhibit 10 guy, another fifth year senior, had a good year, averaged 11 points per game. So it's it's a it's a Final Four matchup that could literally have one player drafted in June, with that being Zach Eady. I mean, that is a very, very strong possibility that this matchup could have only one player drafted. I'm looking forward to to just seeing, like, you know, them banging the post. I want to see, like, how NC State looks to defend Eady. Or at least how to make him work on defense. Are they going to play Burns at the, you know, maybe at the free throw line? And that's like he can knock down that shot, but you don't want. But that's that not where you be, want him at the whole time. Yeah, you don't want that to be the whole thing. And then to me, the, what it's going to boil down to is who can get who in foul trouble first. If Burns can go at Edie, get him in some foul trouble, then it changes everything, everything for Purdue. And so I wonder, is that the game plan early in the game? See if you can get the ball to Burns, maybe get ED to pick up a couple fouls. And then after that, you he's have not a pick, good... he's not picking up no fouls, man. <laughs> he, he, he got, he remember uh, those J. Will Duke teams. Oh my gosh. Once J. Will got four fouls. <laughs> oh yeah. J. Will had nine fouls. Yeah. yeah he, once he, he got, he four got fouls, that J. Will cap, he man. He, 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 could, he could do whatever he wanted on defense because they were not going to foul nah, him out. Nah, he's not going to foul him out, man. I mean, I'm but there's some people that was even tweeting during the game that, you know, the refs weren't going to let. Duke win. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the I mean, rest but you see, Duke but lose. you saw that tech they called on Keats, right? Yeah, where the ball went and hit the in the hit the scoreboard. Like that wasn't. Come on, me don't tee him up for that. So yeah. I don't know, man. I'm just a regular dude here, but yeah. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast. This episode was about NC State and the top NBA prospects on NC State, which. I mean, it's very likely this team will not have anybody drafted in June, but that means nothing in college basketball in the Final Four. Stay tuned in the next episode where we are going to go into more depth about Zach Eady. Can anyone stop Zach Eady in college basketball? James and I, we're going to share our thoughts on Eady, and we're going to talk about if he's changed his perception with this deep Final Four run because he's definitely silenced some doubters. I mean, there's still some people that are just not going to be Zach Eady believers regardless of what he does but next episode all about Zach Eady. once again it's Raphael with my brother James and we are out of here 